What are we talking about? I don't fucking know a lot of things. Um, stuff. We're the Ungodly Geeks. I'm Luke. I'm Joe. What's going on, everybody? I was going to try to have you give me like a half second of silence so I could know where the actual transition was, but that's we okay. We can do the silence. No, it's too late now. You we, had a half we've, second. We've already just we've already done out. the thing. I mean, we'll do. You just throw all of okay. the, half the intro in there. We know how we the, the patrons are going to see twenty minutes of you doing um fucking. Uh, Oh, yeah, me sitting here trying to figure out why my microphone was being a piece of shit. All right, I got to start it off because I didn't do one last week. So I'm going to start it off with a really big one. The news is stupid this week. (laughs) Um, I I don't know if I can truly take this seriously because we've gotten to a point where um, with this presidency, it's hard to tell um, what's satire and what's real. It's just not satire. But it's all it is. (laughs) But it's like, there's this website, I've never heard of it, it's called GlamourFame.com, and they have an article published on the 4th of of April, Donald Trump claims windmill noise causes cancer. So I saw that everywhere, I didn't read the actual article, but I guess he tweeted it, or did he say it in the press conference? Uh, Okay, apparently, here's the video of Trump talking about windmills at the NRCC dinner tonight. They say the noise causes cancer. It's just so. I mean, um, one of the. I can't if this remember. wasn't on Twitter, I would get the video and splice it in yeah. into our own video so everybody can see it. But it's a like pain it. in the ass. Um, it, it apparently, it's headed on a C-SPAN, so this is legit. Um, I mean, it's not the first time that the U.S. President Donald Trump has raised his voice against wind power. Trump has been highlighting this subject for years now, precisely after his battle with Scottish officials who planned to build a windmill in the site of his golf resort in Aberdeen. However, this time, the 45th President of the United States exclusively said it during a speech at the fundraiser. Just, I, I, he's become a parody of himself. He has become the meme. The meme. He is the meme now. I mean, like I to said a before, new, a whole new level. I think more. It's just reaffirming everything I've said. If he's the mean president, and Donald Trump, he says these things, and I, I'm starting to believe that it's not only on purpose because he's saying it. It's not even because he believes it. It's just this is what he's doing to constantly keep himself in the news, constantly keep he's number one on everyone's minds. It's I'm just I'm just like. It's just so dumb that it's genius. Yeah. That's where I'm going with it. And I might be, that's probably, hopefully is completely wrong, but at the same time. It's really hard to, yeah. It could be. He could be absolutely fucking genius. I mean, I. Which honestly, at that point, I have to some begrudging respect for it. Like the whole shit show is just, it's all, like he's orchestrated this whole. It's it's, it's just him. Yeah. Doing like I don't know like I, I want to believe though I I do really want to believe that I want to believe that we did not elect a moron yeah but it's like everything he does I it's think just, it, 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 it's so hard to tell is he a complete imbecile or is he a genius if it's not if it's not or the, or it, alternative is he like goofy where he just bumbles into all this this see, stuff that would be on that other side of just bumbling idiot yeah um however there's also a middle ground where it's just and the i think what's probably more true is yeah. donald trump is just a contrarian for the sake of being contrarian at, at all times, he's got oh, yeah. his yeah. his his side that he's going to go for. Doesn't matter if doesn't matter what he says. Is, doesn't matter whether it's reality true or not. fake. No. He's just going to throw out facts. He's going to quote unquote. He's going to throw out. Um, oh, these these people studies say this. What studies? Oh, it's it's essentially like anti-vax studies. Yeah, I think that he's just going to do that because he knows no matter how much people and, and it's that whole. If I throw out a billion lies, you can't even fucking. Can't discern Check the truth. The yeah. yeah, it's just. It, I think that's more what it is, uh, and it's just throwing out, just shit at the wall. He he's one of those people who thinks being a contrarian makes him intelligent, which I know somebody else like that. Yeah, but um, it the, at least he's not one of those idiots who peppers flowery words into his speech to make him seem. No, intelligent. God, no. Donald Trump is very quick, short, and direct, and, and honestly, probably it's, because it's why his vocabulary is not very big. I, I mean, it, even even by design, it's why it's why when he's speaking and stuff, why he can hold a crowd and hold an audience, even people that don't agree with him whatsoever. Yeah. Like I've, I, I still I haven't watched any in a long, long time. But during the election and stuff, I'd watch some of those speeches and the whole time just be like, 
Jesus fucking Christ. Every, a, they're going to eat wreck. up everything, and the stuff he says is crazy. It's a train wreck. Like, you, you can't keep your... like. It's like, yeah, seriously, it's a train wreck. You can't just not it's watch like, it. It's just you watch you it have, to see what's kind of... You got to show what was next. What's yeah, next? What's going to do next? The wall was the big thing. Like, and, and I know there's a lot of a lot of people out there, like news people, other politicians, who were like, the wall, oh, yeah, that's great. That's, that's a... <laughs> Whatever, that's funny. dude. Yeah. And then, no, fucking 100%. People are for the wall, for. This, which... This whole, won't like, fucking do it. Are you are you fighting with the squirrel again? No, actually, there's a really pretty uh, woodpecker right out there right now. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know we had woodpeckers in the area. Yeah, well, at least I think it is. It's a uh, black and white pretty bird. Anyway, <laughs> Luke likes birds. I I don't really give a shit about birds, but <laughs> I, 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 when I see a bird that's different than your average, what the fuck, little brown birds? Right, those, those little, little sparrows. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I got you. I'm, I'm like, oh, hey, a blue jay, oh, a robin, or something like that. And that one, it looks. I think it's a woodpecker. It's Cardinals. Like that, Fucking head thing, the back. I don't know. Whatever. Um, it's birdie. We would show you guys, but I'm Luke's not. not I'm not it. moving to get the camera, and it flew. You're away. you're not even in frame right now. Like you're. Just, I'm barely in frame, and you're. And I had to just, move it over to do that. You're the one that adjusted it too, because it was it was kind of fine before. No, it, I wasn't in it at all. That's yeah, why I had to move it. You want me to show you the last video? Or not the last were, video. I mean, just a minute. It, it hadn't it hadn't changed at all. So it, I don't know. It, just a minute ago, you it made didn't it have me in frame at all. Yeah, look, we can barely see his face. Look, it's, it's fine. Funny. I don't anyway. even look at the fucking camera anyway. I keep forgetting it's there. Because we have a conversation. We really need to do that Joe Rogan setup. So we have like, like we even do our phones. Have one here and have one here facing you. Yeah. So, you know, we don't have to look at the camera, but it's like at least shows us. Dude, I. But I'm, of course, we're too fucking I'm lazy, way too for, that lazy right now. for that man. <laughs> Like that, that setup is something I would like to eventually achieve. Uh, but dude, I'm lazy. Oh yeah, no. I, that, that's, that's so much that's more work. Three on me. video, or that's two video sources to uh, sync up. Yeah, which possibly three if you just use the if you use this camera. But I have I have thought about um, buying like a cell phone mount and another tripod and like because I got my Pixel two that I'm mm-hmm. not using and it has a shitload of space. Just wipe it clean, put nothing but Android on it, and just set it right here pointing at me, and then set that camera pointing at you. It's one way to do it. But, but again, I'm lazy. two video yeah, sources no, they have that. to sync um, sound up to. I mean, sync, syncing the sound and all that wouldn't be terribly difficult. It's like uh, like getting them to record at the same time. Like, yeah. I'd have to... Like, yeah. No, I, I, I don't want to do it. Yeah. I could totally do it. There's nothing... Le- there's legitimately nothing stopping me. I it's have the skill. Way more I have the knowledge. Time. I just don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that, that becomes a thing. I don't want to spend the money on the tripod. I don't want to spend the so money on the somebody who wants cell phone to do the, uh <laughs> oh, that's the cell phone mount's not that bad. We just use this one and then fucking get one of those little clippy ones and just clip it to the chair. <laughs> Have it sitting there. Okay, that's a $900 phone. I'm not sure. having it, like, fall. But, I mean, it's not going to fall. Those things are pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I, I have that paranoia. Yeah. Come on, it's a sensitive piece of electronics. Uh, how many times did you drop it? Like six. There you go. <laughs> this is carpet. Okay, but you don't drop it on purpose. <laughs> It's not on purpose. It's not like I'm going out like, oh, no, I dropped my phone. I have it flaunch across the parking lot. I've dropped this one. Like, okay, so I got this one. This is the Razer phone, too. Yeah. And um, I got it on, like, a Monday. And I, it was late Monday, and I was playing with it and all that. I was like, damn, this thing is cool. Those speakers are awesome and all that. Um, so Tuesday night, I go to, like, get in the shower. And uh, I like to listen to music when I'm in the shower. So I have a shower speaker. But I'm like, you know what? This thing's water resistant, and these speakers are loud as shit. I bet it'll be fine. And so, oh, no, that's famous last word. Um, so I set it up there where, because I have like um, an old body wash bottle that I have st- jammed between the wall and my uh, towel rack in the shower mm. to put my speaker on. Yeah. And I set this up there and I started playing music and it fell into the shower. Oh, and like, God. um, my shower is weird in that the water pressure is way too high for the drain, mm. so it always fills up. Yeah. So it was about two inches deep at this point because I had lived it on to, to whatever Yeah. because I was brushing my teeth or whatnot and I, and I fucking like oh god and then I remember oh it's water resistant I don't have to worry about it I pick it up the speakers were quiet I'm like oh no yeah. and I'm sitting there thinking oh fuck it's broke I've, I had it I've had it for 36 hours and it's broke <laughs> and so I was like you know what it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. So I just, I dry it off and I take it and I set it back in, in my bedroom and I grab my speaker and put my speaker up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the rest of the night, the speakers were quiet. Yeah. And I was like, 
I'm I'm silently freaking out. I'm like, I'm, I'm okay. Just let it dry. It'll yeah, no, and, and the funny thing is, is uh, the next day speakers were fine. Yeah, just had water on them. I guess just had water on them. Yeah, but I was, uh, dude, I was freaking out because it's eight hundred dollar phone. I don't know why I bought it, but I fucking bought it. And, well, I know why I bought it because I was tired of the Pixel Two being shitty. Yeah. But yeah, like God, <laughs> I had so many performance issues with it. I don't know how people can live with it. I mean, yeah. I'm a power user. Four gigs of RAM, not enough. It's really mm-hmm. not enough. You gotta have six or eight, or in the case this this has eight. Yeah. Samsung, some of the Samsung models have twelve. Like, there yeah, you the go. one this has eight. Yeah, like you need eight. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm a firm believer that you need eight gigs of RAM for for Android these days. Four is not enough. Google, yeah. fix it. Because I mean, I I like Android by itself takes up a three point fucking three just sitting there, and then I'm trying. I'm and anything there, else you're doing? Is- yeah. So I'm sitting there trying to play Pokemon Go because I play a lot of Pokemon Go. Yeah. And I would switch to like, I would respond to a message you sent or a message someone sent in a group chat or I'd switch to Discord to respond to a message there or, I don't know, insult Cody or something and I'd switch back and Pokemon Go would be dead. It's just gone. I'm like, I was, it was 10 fucking seconds. I was tired of that. That was like uh, my last phone. Same thing. I'd switch from between two different apps. It's gone. And the, the, app, you, the app you just... Yep, it's gone. It's just disappeared. It's, just it's like, gone. Oh, fuck. I was so fucking annoyed. Um, that's one of the reasons I stopped using Google Music, because that app seemed like it wanted to get away as fast as possible. Oh no, I had that problem with YouTube Music. You, that's what I meant. Yeah, YouTube, YouTube music. music. Yeah, yeah, not YouTube. Google Music. I love Google Music. I, I YouTube sat music. there. I turned off every possible battery optimization yep. and memory optimization option for that. Didn't matter. And I, I got to a point um, where it was around seventy-five percent. Yeah, a chance it would remain there, but there's still that 25, but it would just die, and it, it annoyed me so much. Now Google Play Music does that sometimes, but if I have my headset in and I hit yeah. play, it opens right back up. Yeah, usually with Google Play Music, um, if I've I've been listening to it and I pause it manually, yeah, and I can switch between three or four things, mm-hmm. and it it doesn't go away if it's that that yeah. the uh, thing will still be in my notification bar, um, the player, uh, but. YouTube music. YouTube was just music was so would, bad. It would die when I you would hit the home it. button yeah. to go to like the home, back to your and home. And it would just disappear. It's like, what the fuck? I get so mad. And because, like you said, I constantly am switching between yeah. things on my phone. Because you got to do other things. Work. I pause something, I, you know, pull up Reddit real quick, or I got to send a message real quick. And then it's save Save a link gone. to your Google Doc so you know what the fuck to talk yeah. about during the podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or bookmark a porn site for later exactly or you, you find something on reddit like you know i want to i want to look at that later mm-hmm. so yeah uh, i actually started using um telegram for some of that like i have a couple yeah. links in telegram that not, i'm not going to talk about but stuff i want to look at later yeah um, do, you, do you just not send the message no no the, it has a saved message thing where you can send a message to yourself um, oh i need to start doing that though um here i'll show you it's been three actually, or four times i've wanted in, I've in telegram about doing that um it's just called save messages right there below jake's jake's face Nice. Okay. Yeah. I'll mess with that. Yeah. And that's actually where I saved the uh, title for the last podcast that you came up with. My Batman is better than your Batman. <laughs> yeah, I love that title. Because uh, otherwise I was going to forget it. Um, oh, totally. All right. So let's move on and talk about something actually relevant to, uh, you know. Our shtick. What that actually was our shtick. Um, but one thing I have open right now is the tweet from Nintendo of America about the new Toy-Con VR goggles. Yes. Um, the, Toy-Con. Okay, so are, is that they're they're not putting Labo? Oh no, it, it's called it, it's called the Labo Nintendo uh, Toy-Con VR Labo goggles. Labo Nintendo. Okay, <laughs> basically what it is. Ah, I love the fucking long it's, titles. It's fucking stupid as hell. Uh, but what basically what it is? It's it's just the Toy-Con VR kit, yeah. and it's literally just Google Cardboard for your Switch, but you yeah. have to hold it to your face. They're not even gonna. They have to come with a strap. I maybe it does, but all I'm looking at here shows what they you, show. It doesn't look like it has one. Yeah, what it shows is uh, there, there it looks like there could be a space for one on the goggles. Yeah. Um, but like stuff like the blaster or the elephant or the camera stuff like that. Like it looks like you have to hold it up to your face. There's also a Toy-Con bird and the Toy-Con wind pedal. Um, what are, I didn't see those. What are those? Uh, they're just other Toy Con projects. Oh, okay. What um, that use the VR goggles? Like the blaster is literally an extension that goes onto the bottom, 
where you have a gun, like a rifle or a shotgun <laughs> type thing sticking out from that's, the front. That's actually kind of interesting. That, it's that's, all made of cardboard. I, I got to be honest with you, that's the only one I'm remotely interested in. Yeah. I am not interested in the VR goggles um, because when you think VR and what they're saying with like, hey, you know, yeah. Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild are going to support VR. I think, and I think everyone is thinking this, is where you – look through the character's eyes. Yeah. That's what I was sitting there hoping. I didn't care about the Odyssey part. Mm-hmm. But I'm simply thinking, oh, I want to look through Link's eyes as I run That's around exactly Breath of the Wild. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's no, basically no. you're just playing the game with it up to your face. That's why I'm wondering what the hell, like, so one of the big things about VR that is very important, it's why um, people, some people more, it seems like more people have problems with PlayStation VR. Yeah. Um, or is it Oculus? I can't remember which one. One of them. Doesn't matter. Um, they all suck. How smooth it is. They don't. The yeah. is awesome. Um, how smooth it is and yeah. the higher the frame rate makes a big difference Yeah, um, um, for I mean, making people, that, whether you can get sick or get headaches. So that's, that's, that's actually something that is very important because you mm-hmm. need a minimum of 90 hertz, 90 frames a second in order to achieve that well. Yeah. And that's that's a problem I do foresee with this. Um, because this doesn't it come close. It's a 60 hertz frame. It's, it's a 60 hertz panel on the Switch as far as I know. Yeah. And not all of those get, like Breath of the Wild runs at 30 frames a second. Yeah, I was going to say. It's, when it's it undocked. It does not. When it's, when it's docked, it can it can hit sixty frames and then stutters <laughs> and then it stutters. Yes, because the grass is too much for when it. The grass is waving. Which you know, if like as I, and I'm sure I've mentioned this before, when you play Skyrim, you know, grass can be a huge fucking hit on your yeah, FPS. Exactly. So I, I I get it, especially when you understand that the grass in Breath of the Wild is dynamic and reactive. That's why it does that? Yeah, that, that, that's the that's the huge reason. Whereas it's why they in take Skyrim, that when you're it's just mobile. it's just shitty fucking two D textures. Just a, uh, texture. Yeah, it doesn't it's move. Terrible. Which hey, you know what? I mean, it's a big enough game that I get why they did that. Texture. Yeah, they can course. do better now. Oh, absolutely. Um, which we'll get into that because that's some news apparently oh. that's behind closed doors. But um, as far as this goes, that's why I'm like I'm looking at this because I've recently I, I don't know if I mentioned it last week. I got the five, and I've been playing the hell out of it. One thing I just started playing uh, in the last few days yes. is Skyrim VR. Right. Um, and it's it's fun. It's enjoyable as hell. Right. Um, I, I dig these VR games. I don't I don't get the motion sickness some people have. Right. Um, the game does different things to help alleviate that too, which is nice. Uh, you, the you have different control styles, but one of the main things is um, when you turn with a button instead of turning manually, or you know you're turning your head at the same time. Um, that easily causes motion sickness. So one thing it does is it actually kind of zooms in and gives you a black uh, ring around. So it almost does tunnel vision. Oh, that's nice. So that if you're spinning with the button uh, and, you know, you're still turning your head, you don't get that disassociation. It doesn't fuck with your um, right. equilibrium too much. I mean, because that's the thing you can totally do. You can totally turn, like, your whole body yeah. in real life and not get sick. Exactly. You know, exactly. Like, but when you... Like, I can turn this way, but turn my head What you're seeing is there. turning at a different speed. And yeah. It, it starts... It can fuck with you. Um, See, now, here's the thing. That, and it's important to have high quality with that. Now, now, we're talking about Skyrim VR. Yeah. And I mentioned the 90 frames, 90 hertz things. Yeah. My thing is, like, like the, the thing that, that, that sort of makes me question what's going on with Skyrim VR, VR is the physics engine. Because the Havoc's physics engine that they use is tied to the frame rate. Yeah. And playing at high frame rates can cause the physics to go wonky. For example, play the game at 120 hertz at 120 frames. Mm-hmm. Fucking shit flies all over the goddamn so, place. I've noticed, um, I was playing it yesterday. And I was going through the first Clearwater Barrow. Is that Bleak what that Wal- Bleak Falls Barrow? Yeah. Bleak Falls. So I'm going through Bleak Falls. And God, you know what's you know what's, well, it's a shame. I find it to be a shame is yeah. that I know about eighty percent of the major locations in that game by heart. Yeah. That's not surprising. I, I like I know yeah, I but, don't know names because again, I don't memorize fantasy names very well. Yeah. Like Game of Thrones, half the characters I give nicknames. Pokemon, same thing. <laughs> All the new Pokemon are nicknamed or that ugly bug one. You're you're, um, you're like you're like a mom. Yeah. Go catch Pikachu. Just about. Mom, that's Squirtle. Go catch Pikachu. No, I'm I'm not that bad. <laughs> I give them funny nicknames that usually you can figure out, but in any case, um, I mean, one, yeah, like you, could, you, you guys should yeah. hear us when we talk about that stuff because he'll bring up like he'll, he'll bring up this wacky ass description. And I go, oh, that's this Pokemon. Yep, <laughs> the one with the big fucking mouth and four legs. Oh, <laughs> that's Hippodon. <laughs> yeah, 
Like, I just throw out, like, I know. But, yeah, please continue. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm playing that, and I start stealth archering because it's Skyrim, and oh, that's dude. what you do. Yeah, no, that, that is the default play style. And where you find the Drogar that are standing up in the coffins, yeah. and I shot them. <laughs> three times in a row this happened and every time I fucking broke down laughing because I stealth attacked them and their great uh, ancient warhouses come flying at me yes. at high speeds yes. go flying like if yes, the physics engine that... had damage tied to it I would have died like three or four times it does when you are the one coming in to- contact and making it fly off yeah. like uh, when you walk through some bones you can take damage from yes them. yeah yeah when I've you noticed walk, that like, when you walk through when bones you can before. make them fucking fly because that's they how can they can hurt you yeah they can hurt you it's like a little tiny damage but yeah, this, I think it's I a like, whole different thing when you have a fucking great axe yeah, flying at your head great axe flying at me at like fucking hyperspeed I was like I should be dead right now but it was so funny that each, each time I killed them that the, the the physics engine went fucking wall. Yeah, no, the, I love the physics engine in yeah. that it adds that little bit of realism to the game. And I find it to be probably better than NVIDIA's physics, or at least NVIDIA's physics, whatever version they use for Borderlands 2, which I fucking wish they would fix. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit better, but it, it's so much fun that you can really fuck it's with it. It's just silly. It's silly yeah. shit happens. Other than that, like uh, graphically, it's way cut down. Oh, yeah, uh, which it, it has to be. To be. Yeah, yeah, no, it absolutely has There's to be. There's a lot of beautiful VR games, but obviously Skyrim, this older engine, I mean, yeah, considering just it's, making it's, the whole game. It, it was a game that's not built for VR. It's eight and a half years old, or seven yeah. and a half years old right now, so it's like, what do you expect? Uh, other than that, it runs, it actually runs really well. It's why I'm still, I go back to Breath of the Wild, and like you, totally, when I heard this, I want... First person VR breath. Yeah, of the no, wild. I I want to I want to like like when you're using uh the, the look around thing yeah. that where you're seeing through Link's eyes. That's what I want. That's why I'm wondering what what's the point of the is is the motion tied to it at all? Which uh, like, I mean, okay, with Breath of the Wild, the motion is indeed tied to it. You can have the yeah, motion controls yeah, yeah. for aiming and shit. So is it like is it going to be but like that where I have motion not, controls over the camera? They're not very. It, it, it's Am I going to be looking like this? And, yeah, but that would be awful that compared would be awful. to like a VR headset which tracks your turns. Yeah, this is just internal motion control, which like you'd be okay. doing this the to try thing, and get the camera to pan over here. The one thing that I will give um, Nintendo is that they've made an amazing they in that in that what that right Joy-Con they do have an amazing gyroscope and in yeah. in in the Switch itself there is also a pretty good gyroscope I don't know if that'll be enough, but like good, you know? No, well, or, yeah, not, not not like not not what you would expect out of VR. Yeah, not it's what I, I yes, trips that's me the thing. Out. Like that's the thing. Like I don't know if it's going to be good enough for VR. Yeah. Now maybe if it's using both, because I, I I believe that the one in the right Joy-Con could probably be good enough because it is just sensitive enough to detect when you're looking at the fucking like when you point your like, like there are motion control games that I've seen they're really simple, but you know how like the Wii Remote. I've played a couple of those, and yeah. they do not work like the Wiimote. They don't work that good at all. They don't work that well. They're still very much... Janky. They're very much... Motion is based here. It's yeah. not, like, aiming. Yeah. So you're still tilting. You're, that's that's where you're getting your motion from. Don't get me wrong. Like you said, it, it is amazing, the yeah. technology they put in that Joy-Con, but it's not, it's not full, like... It's not tracked is the problem. You know, it's, it's still motion control. It's not tracking. While we're talking about Joy-Cons, yeah. why can't we buy individual Joy-Cons anymore? <laughs> Nintendo, they want to sell you a double uh, pack for 90 fucking dollars or whatever it is. I mean, they were still like they were still more expensive individually, though, yeah. than they were together. So I'm like, I, I just need I, I need a new left Joy-Con. Yeah. I attempted to uh, I broke my red one. Um, I don't remember how. I think I might have either slept on it or stepped on it. I'm pretty sure I slept on it. Yeah. Um, and so I tried to replace its case, which went well until I got to the point where you have to take the shoulder button off, the, the trigger. Mm-hmm. I lost one of the springs. Ah. So I'm at this point. I, it's somewhere in my living room. Teeny little pew. And it, it, it's, it's like this big, and my living room is like a thousand times that size. <laughs> so it's like I'm not finding it out there. Yeah. Like half of my fucking apartment. A year from now, you might like be sweeping a corner. It'll be, be like, like, it'll be like that the, little fucker. The day I move out of here, yeah. 
is like, oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. I don't fucking need it now. I've already thrown that away. I've got the Switch 6 or some shit. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, like, oh, now I've got the Switch Pro 3 and a quarter. The new Switch Pro. That's that's what it's going to be. 2025. It's like God, but yeah, like I'm, I'm kind of upset by that. Yeah. Because I was gonna make it atomic purple, and then I was gonna fucking hook it up to my computer and make it appear as atomic purple on the goddamn switch, and it was gonna be cool. Yeah. Now I can't. Nope. That's because I lost that spring, and that spring is important. I don't know. I. The other funny thing about the Labo ToyCon VR shit. Yeah. Um, from a few of the like. Uh, journalist people that have gotten to mess mess with it yeah have actually said good things about it it's to me it sounds gimmicky as fuck it sounds very nintendo i think it, it's not going to it's not going to replace anything at mario no. i mean of course not. it's just it's just adding it's just another exactly. little gimmick mario thing have. mario very much makes me think that nintendo isn't <clears throat> so much planning on we're going to make games based on this or anything right since it's only three missions uh, I mean, it sounds like Breath of the Wild, they're going full out, but I can't imagine that it's any more than, ooh, it's right in my face, I'm playing Breath of the Wild. I mean, that's what I get from it. Like, I, I mean, I watched the video they posted on Twitter, and that, that's it very much... It just doesn't much, show anything, but how that, you can't even experience it. That's, that's ve- well, that's, that's very much the vibe I get, yeah. though. It's just, it's just playing the game, except now, instead of it being down here or it being on the big screen, it's... Right there. You're looking at it, and it's, it's oh, just, it's it's with and me. And another thing know. is, you need moderately high resolutions for proper VR. Yeah, 720p. Come to on, to me, man. this sounds like it's not even attempting VR. It sounds like they're putting that title on it, and it's going to be like those glorified they're... phone VRs, where all it is is splitting the image between both eyes. Yeah, so that it gives you maybe a better depth of field and or something. I mean, that's kind of cool. And you know, that's the thing. Like, I, I like they used to take X One. The Tegra X One is very powerful. Yeah, and mm-hmm. if they could get past the power requirement and like the thermal envelope that they have to deal with, because the fucking switch is that thick. Yeah, um, and it's portable, so they can't pack a lot into it. It could probably do decent low-level VR. Like, you could be playing, like, that one cooking game on it or something. Like, yeah. Or the game where you're a cashier simulator. Like, you could probably play those games legitimately because it could drive. Yeah. I mean, I can I can tell you from experience, it can very easily drive a 4K display mm-hmm. because it's my shield. It's basically a shield TV, but portable. Mm-hmm. And, of course, there are some differences. Like, it doesn't have a direct line from Bluetooth to audio so there's no that's why that's one reason why there's no bluetooth audio mm-hmm. um but uh, of course also they got a down clock to cpu they got a down clock to epu because they got the power requirements and the heat mm-hmm. envelope but i can definitely tell you from experience that the tegra x1 in the switch could drive a 4k display and display content at 4k yeah if they really really wanted to nintendo could have that like they could throw a media player a media library on there where you could stream 4k movies to the switch and play it in 4k and it would be fine Mm-hmm. Well, it's docked, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's the other thing I was going to mention. Is, yeah. Um, battery life undocked and, and with this VR thing, how... I mean, honestly, depending on how they're, they're doing it, with a 720p screen, you can't... I don't know if you could do the split screen thing well. That's the only thing I can imagine that they're doing. I don't know. It looks like there's some type of lenses that come with the Labo kit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's definitely lenses in there. Like you yeah. look at the, you look. I'm looking at the, like the pictures and shit, and they're like, there's, there's got to be because it, it shows it very, very prominently on the, on the. Un, until more of it comes out, to me, this sounds a lot like the 3ds 3D capabilities, which are actually very nice on the new 3ds. Because especially yeah. when they added the head tracking and all. I that. mean, yeah, nice, but it, what I mean is like it's gimmick. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's I, something no, I you totally might use it. once or twice and I mean, it's never not, touch again. Except I, this is a who knows how much this is gonna be like a eighty bucks. Oh, an eighty bucks. Okay, and so as of cash. as of the time of this recording, it comes out in six days. Oh wow! And Nintendo just yeah. when Nintendo does stuff, they just fucking do it, which is what's impressive. I mean, I don't know. I it might it might be pretty. Cool. I actually it um might be fun. I was reading a Reddit thread this morning while at work um of like all the companies in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Nintendo ranks number nine on a list of most reputable companies. Yeah, where the consumer like like. Like, obviously, that doesn't take into account, like, working conditions or anything. It's what the consumer sees, what the consumer thinks of the company. Like, the better business ranking or something like that. Yeah, like, they did business reports, I think. It was either business reports or business insight or something like that, where they did, like, a poll or whatever, research, a study, whatever you want to call it. And and they they rank among companies like Costco and McCormick and, and like, uh, Sony, I think, was on the list. 
but not like for video games. Yeah. Because Nintendo was the only video game company, where Sony was like for their music or movies or whatever. Yeah. Um, Amazon consumer was on that list at one point. Yeah. Um, not consumer, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like they do things well, and that was one of their things. Like like, and and a lot of what the thread was saying, a lot of people were pointing out, like while well, you got the EAs of the world and and mm-hmm. all that, who sit there and push for profits. Mm-hmm. At whatever cost, they want to make a dollar now, rather than make a dollar later down the road. They want to, they want that dollar now. Whereas Nintendo plays a long con, a long game, yeah. where they build that consumer base by just putting out quality stuff. They worry more about that quality, and that 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 is echoed in their treatment of Metroid Prime Four, where they came out and said, "What's been built, yeah, it fucking sucks." So we're gonna scrap everything. It's and start a company over. that actually cares, yeah, um, about. Their products, their their people, yeah, uh, employees, everything. That's a a good transition to something that I was thinking of bringing up. Um, even though I, I think this is beating a dead horse at this point. Um, I mean, that's one of the things we do well. We did yes. four separate episodes on one topic. We can we can beat a dead horse um, some more. Speaking of that one topic, uh, it's not and it, it, it's not Witcher three this time. Um, oh no, that's we've done thing. like we've done like thirty episodes on Witcher three. It's fine. Um, so I th- I want to say it was a Kotaku. And Bye, I'm sorry Witcher if I got, three. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry if I get it wrong, but I think it was Kotaku. Yeah, they had this write up. Kotaku. They had this write. This is actually a good thing about Kotaku, though. Right. So, um, an article came out of um, where um, Anthem went wrong, where EA went and by oh, went wrong with Anthem. Yeah, um, I do. I, yeah, I did not read that. Yeah, I probably I, should have. I, I read through some of it and but actually listened to some other people talk about it. Yeah, yeah same thing. Um, and I mean, we're in the age of who reads articles? Who read headlines? I read articles. <laughs> I know. I I'm not retarded like hate, the rest of these people. I I, I I hate that sometimes I am guilty of like skimming and reading things. Okay. This okay. one I didn't oh, read oh, the whole thing. If I'm going to be honest, the news of the stupid, I just yeah. read the article and that's all I needed. Yeah. I, or not the article. I just read the title because that's all I needed. Because that's, that's all we want. That's it's all. not. It's just a sm- small bite size. It's not going to affect your life or anything. Um. So. This article, which w- the first time I heard about it was people talking about um, the easier article to write would have been what Anthem got right, <laughs> which is very true. Yeah, it's, but, it's like when you have that person who's really shitty and someone asks you, what are their good qualities? Yeah. Like, you know what? I don't have that list. It's like, mm, he cooks a mean egg. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like, he's got one good quality. Yes. I know what's his bad qualities. Like, it would be easier for me to tell you what his good qualities are. It's like, exactly. he's got a big dick and he can cook a mean egg. That's that's all he's got going <laughs> for him. Otherwise, he smells like shit. Scott and Johnson. He's an asshole. And <laughs> yeah. But so uh, he writes up this article and it's not specifically like the game itself right. he apparently was doing a lot of investiga- investigations into Bioware into the development of the game um, because it would surprise most people that this game has been in development for like 10 plus years or 6 years or something like that but yeah, I, I, I could, would I say could, it was like 10 plus years I could probably I could believe that like I really could um, because I mean and I could see it even going through multiple titles and phases. Probably, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, is a, a few of the things that were in this that game is that up until like a year or less before launch, yeah. this was in no way, shape, or form a marketable, playable game at all. That makes a it lot of goes, sense. They went into absolute fuck you crunch time to get a playable product in time for their ship date. Which I'm EA mandated after the fact. Also, they're using an engine that was developed, you know, by Bioware for the Bioware type games, the Mass Effect engine. Um, this engine is in no way, shape, or form designed to be a multiplayer, large open world uh, engine. It's, right, not, it's right. just not. So everything about this game from the ground up was against the game that EA decided it had to be. Didn't EA do that recently where they took a studio, they gave them the Frostbite engine. This is and literally told... what EA does. They did this to Visceral. Yes. They told Visceral, you're making a Battlefield game. We're calling it Battlefield Hardline. It's going to be cops and robbers. Yeah. Visceral's like, 
we don't do that sort of game. We do open world um, and, sandbox games. And not to mention that they gave them an engine that wasn't designed for that because I nope. believe they used Frostbite. Well, no, no, no. The, uh, Frostbite is can be totally – because that's what Battlefield's built on, Battlefront's well, built on. Okay, I, I remember something recently, and maybe I'm wrong. It's probably Anthem is what you're talking about. But no, 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 because it, it wasn't Bioware. Done this, okay. It wasn't Bioware. They've um, done this multiple times. I don't think it was Visceral either, but it was another studio that they had under their belt, yeah. and they did something similar where they gave yeah. them the Frostbite engine – which was designed for sports games and games like that. It was that. Star Wars. There it was go. the Star Wars game that got canceled. That's what it was, um, yeah. yeah. I remember that now because I, I remember reading the interview that the uh, director of that game did where mm-hmm. she was like, yeah, they gave us this engine. They told it us this how we have to use this. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't like optimized for that kind nope. of gameplay. You know, it would be like taking the Skyrim engine and making a basketball game with it. It yep. just it just wouldn't it's work. It's just well. like you could do it, yeah, but it wouldn't be a basketball game. It's it would be a feasible. It's fucking just, weird. It would be Skyrim, but with basketball hoops and a basketball in it. And 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 by the, the way, the if, a modern, engine, not, if a modern makes that work, <laughs> some, I will personally I'm give sure you twenty dollars. <laughs> like, I, I, I know that's, that's nothing. Twenty bucks is nothing for all that work. But if you like, just prove that it can be done. Yeah. And I will, I will personally send you twenty dollars from my personal PayPal. Skyrim basketball. That's yes. The title. There we go. So, um, <laughs> of the podcast. I, now I want that in VR. Yeah. Why okay. not? Skyrim VR, Skyrim basketball. Skyrim VR basketball oh, edition. Uh, Chauncey Billups or uh, Chauncey Billups VR Skyrim basketball. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Aw. Uh, I'm maybe. trying to think of a funny, but he's, for some reason, he's the first basketball player that came to life. Michael Jordan plays Skyrim. <laughs> Michael Jordan Skyrim edition. <laughs> Skyrim, Michael Jordan edition. There we go. <laughs> That's what we're going to call it, this one. Oh, my God. But, uh, oh, no, Ro- uh, what was his name? Dennis Rodman? Dennis Rodman edition. Yes. Yeah, I could dig he's, it. He, yeah, he's crazy. But, yeah. <laughs> he so, absolutely is. So he's it, friends with Kim Jong-un. And this is like, yeah. yeah he fucking, uh, he was friends with his dad, too. Yeah. They they tried Hennessy together. Um, but, yeah, this is this is the thing that EA does. Yeah. Use this engine. Make this game. Not designed for this engine that you've, your company, your, pe- your, your developer team doesn't do. And, by the way, you have a time limit. Yeah. Yeah, so they get down to – and it, so this dude reveals all this stuff that he went, investigated, you know, found all this stuff, talking to former EA, former employees, looking through record, yada, yada, whatever he did. I right, don't know right, exactly. right, right. Um, and Bioware, the day after the article comes out, releases this – Blog post. Uh, yes. Yeah. Their response that very clearly, one, they didn't – look at the article yeah so probably didn't read it at all um is completely dismissive <laughs> of everything talking about the mistreatment of employees the the idea of this super crunch time oh that the bioware crunch is a good thing is the way that they've made it out to be i mean they, no. people working 80 90 100 hours a week to get yeah. your stupid fucking game out the door and is probably not, not getting in not paid that thing. overtime for it oh yeah no, you people know they're fucking getting... having panic attacks. walmart pays their overtime better than ea yes. does yeah most video and then it's a lot of developers yeah um it's just it, it, it was completely dismissive it was like we choose not to um talk I, I can't remember the exact wording but it's like we choose to uplift other people in the community not tear others down that's i think that's what they said is not tear others down oh so they were not they wanted to take the moral high ground yeah 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 like Go this was yourselves. a hit piece like this guy's out there and fuck bar like like something we would say like fuck this fuck ea this <laughs> shitty ass company no fucking dotted you know talked about it went through like it, it just shat all over it it's like fuck you fuck you fuck your whole existence you pieces of shit. Yeah. You d- – like – and I'm not even – like like Bioware, not the developers themselves, the people who actually put blood, sweat, and tears into this. But the fucking management and the fucking corporate people, the people that forced them to do this, that forced out this piece of shit that now they're putting more and more monetization in. Yeah. Um, they're – they looks like they're putting in a tool pay-to-win model soon. It's supposed to be the next big update. Oh yeah, you know they're new. You know they're going to. It's okay it's, for some reason. This security camera is offline, despite the fact that I can very clearly see it's online. That's funny. Anyway, I don't care. Um, <laughs> so yeah, someone's spying on us. Um, but maybe it's just it's like a fucking fuck it. Why not? Someone had access to my Discord account for a fucking fucks. month. Yeah, well, a week, whatever <laughs> day. It was a week. Was it that? Oh god. Yeah, well, she had it for a while. She, she was didn't watching. Fuck with it for a while. She was con- she was watching conversations. That's funny. But um. 
it's like it's like a train a complete and utter train wreck yeah of it wasn't even remotely close and then they just force and force and force to be because because they decided there was no thought put into it they decided hey that that destiny thing that 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 um we need to get on we that. want that yeah in that game what's the one from um ubisoft the tom clancy one um, division, division. We two. want that. Yeah, make division. And it's funny because division two apparently like hundred times is better than anthem. Like it does everything right. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather. There's a lot of games I'd rather play more than an- over anthem. You know. No, yeah, and that's the thing is I'm not into the live service <laughs> idea of games. Um, I mean, if that's what you want to play, cool. Hey, yeah, have fun know. with those games. Like, like I'm like going we've to be judging about you. Destiny two. I, I really am going to be judging you. But yeah, go for it. I mean, to me, it's very. I, I don't like the live services taking over games. Yeah, because I, I, you can see the future of we're gonna get games that shouldn't be like that. Beyond Good and Evil Two is a good example of a game yeah. that's going to be shot out mm-hmm. as a live service. That that game has no business being a live service because it was a fucking. The guy Beyond Good and Evil was like a character story driven single player game. That's fucking gonna be fucked. Fallout seventy six is a good example. Anthem's a good example. Um, there's just a lot of things that are going to be shat out like that. Yeah. But it's the same token of there's Battlefield or um, not Battlefield, um, Battlegrounds games. Yeah. Same scenario. Oh, yeah. All sorts of the, um, yeah, the, the fucking. Uh... Everybody wants to jump on that money train. Yeah. And then when it crashes, it burns. And, and it will. Yeah. Oh, oh it absolutely will. People are having to split their time between, you know, oh, are they a Division fan? Are they a. Um, Whatever, yeah, fucking a, Destiny, a, a fan. Destiny fan. Yeah. I don't get Ubisoft because not they don't just have going with their sequels of their live service games. They've got like nine live service games going on at the same time because they're still pushing the Last Rainbow Six and that game's still doing super well. They're still pushing um, uh, Ghost Recon. Yeah, they've got the the Division, which is killing. At the same time, the and these aren't the live service games, but. Um, Assassin's they've got Creed. the Assassin's Creed. They've got Far Cry's. They've got they, the, the Ubisoft is one of those companies that it's all it's. I think what they're trying to the do the quality that they keep those games at, even yeah. though it is it is their same exact copy pasted quality, is still impressive. It's consistent. I gotta give, yeah, it's, it's consistently, consistently high that Ubisoft quality, and even though they can be the same exact things, it's like I gotta when they and when they hit it right and hit entertain hit that entertainment level. I mean, they. It's pretty good. I mean, I think what they're trying to do is kind of like cast out that net and catch as many different they people. They really as are. Them. They're hitting I mean, every... Like Far, like Far Cry fans aren't necessarily going to cross over with Assassin's Creed fans. And Assassin's Creed fans aren't necessarily going to cross over with Division fans. Mm-hmm. Like, So they they each have their own little like, like yeah. niche or people that they serve. So it's like, I think what they're just trying to do with that, because like you said, there's tons of fucking games out that they mm-hmm. have. Um, they're just trying to cast that net wide. They do that multiple developer studio thing yeah. so much better than EA does, where EA is the only consistency they have is in their sports divisions. Yeah. Because it's the same fucking game copy pasted every year with different stats. Yeah. Whereas well, yeah, they just update they just update the stats based yeah. on how the player performed the with their season. with their other studios, they just they don't let them make the games they should be making. Yeah. They they Which have is, to shit on them or they force the games to be put out too early, to be put out half finished. Um, to yeah, no, be the, the what half they get from the Battlefront thing, um, games and Battlefield Five, and yeah, I mean that that half finish thing is, is, is definitely a, a very EA thing. Yeah, like I mean, obviously there are others who have done that in the past, but that that's almost one of those things that is ubiquitous it's to EA. The road, I mean, and Jim Sterling, I don't think it's as prevalent as Jim Sterling's talked about the roadmap. Yeah, for these games, um, but. With EA, it is all they do. It is all they, they, they've, they like, that is their all-consuming, well, we can release this game partially done, and we'll have our roadmap of quality. Um, Bethesda did it with Fallout 76. That's a really good example of it. Yeah. But EA, even more so, is like, this is how we do things. And the funny thing is you think they notice that problem with destiny their die off the die off of destiny players was so fast oh yeah because no, of their I mean, it was destiny literally ones weekend. Was, was horrible yeah it was it was like literally a week yeah. and it was it was gone it was dead it was just it was dying and then it, it slowly went from, got back up when they released 10, their dlcs it, it actually from, what, got what, better 
60, 70,000 players down to like five. Yeah. Like it was, it was a horrific crash. And yeah, like you said, when they released that DLC, and I still, I still will always laugh when I found that fucking game in, in the value bin with everything yeah. on it. I mean, I don't know, but. I think that's a good segue into talking about. I want to. I want to talk about the Epic Store a little bit, mm-hmm. and what they're doing with it. Um, how oh, it's God. missing so many features. Because you mentioned the roadmap, and that that made me think. Yeah, Epic that's Store. Another one. Like how how can you launch a game store like that and not have a basic feature like a cart? A cart. Like right this second, while we're recording the podcast, I could pull up my own website. And I could add to it a store and in a matter of minutes have a fully functional like gear store running where we have like hats and shit for the Ungodly Geeks logo or whatever. And it could have a cart. And guess what? It wouldn't cost me a fucking dime. It wouldn't be hard at all. It would not cost me a dime. It would take me like it would take me like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna be a little bit generous. It would take me twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. Twenty fucking minutes to just Throw in, pull up my website, pull up the website, log into my account, do the do the installer for an app and say, I want you to install a Shopify or whatever at this URL. Wait 10 minutes, boom, there it fucking is. And we have a fully functional storefront. We won't have any products, but we have a fully functional storefront with a cart. They just added a search function. Like a search function within like the last a couple weeks. Like, okay, like I would consider the eShop on the Nintendo yeah. Switch very bare bones compared to some things, a lot of things. Yeah, it's had a search function from day one. Of it's course. not been great, but it had a fucking search function from day one. It's it's of course it also doesn't have a cart, but yeah, but I mean it, you're that's the console versus right. You know you're using web because uh, Microsoft on the console doesn't. I don't think PlayStation does. Maybe it does. I don't, I don't know. I don't. I haven't have, bought anything. I, on I don't the know. PlayStation I, I, the only store. thing I have is my Vita, and it can't even access PSN because it's hacked, and therefore PSN is no. I can't do it. Yeah, it's well, actually, gone. I could, but maybe. Either way, so, but the thing about Epic Store is, um, it doesn't matter because they decided to use that Fortnite money, mm-hmm. and they won. Oh yeah, they have, um. Now, Borderlands 3 has been announced to be a six-month exclusive, which I immediately I had that first reaction of anger, just like I did with Metro and just like I did with Outlands. Right. But I wasn't planning on buying the game when it came out anyway. Right. Borderlands is one of those games that I know I'm going to wait for the first updates because it's not going to come out good because Gearbox doesn't have a good track record with releasing a decent game at launch. With the exception of... Borderlands Two, it was. Fine I would say Borderlands One, Borderlands Two. Had Borderlands a lot One, of yeah, issues. Borderlands One was fine. Borderlands because it was such 2, a basic game. Like even on the console, they needed a, a like a one point five gig patch to fix a lot of. Well, bugs. that's a pain in the ass, but to yeah. give them credit, that's better than a twenty meg twenty. No, gig don't patch. get me wrong. So the, you, the fact that now we're at this 50, 20, 50 gig patches for day one. Or how about is when you buy a physical game, you pop it in and realize you still have to download fifty oh, gigs of content because it's not so on the disc. Frustrating. Yeah. There's nothing about. on the disc. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing on the disc except a license. Say, yep, I bought the game. Yeah. Let them download it. Yeah. So when they announced that, I wasn't, I was like, at um, first a little angry and then I got over it quick. Outer Lands still bothers me. Uh, or Outlands. Outlands? What's that? That's the um, uh, uh, Obsidian. Obsidian. Um, the guys who did Fallout yeah, New yeah, Vegas. Yeah, Obsidian, yeah. Yeah, their, their Fallout space kind of game. Oh, okay. Um, I don't care. I don't care what to I, – I can't remember what – it looks amazing so right, far. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, the Obsidian, for their track record, makes amazing fucking games. I think the Outlands, <laughs> Outer Lands or whatever it's called is going to be fucking, fucking fantastic. Fucking good, mate. Fucking good, mate. Um. Actually, I, I think fucking is more of a, spe- a Scottish thing, but whatever. Feckin', I don't care. No, I don't think so. I don't care. I make fun of everyone. But um, it, uh, yeah, that's that bothers me. It, it, it just they won because they put that money out there. Because yeah, I mean they've established themselves. Now. They they want to like they want to be competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's fine. I, I'm completely on board with you being competitive. I'm completely on board with you. You know, upsetting the industry. But you're not you're not really being competitive. When all you're doing is just throwing money at it. Yeah, you're not being competitive in a hey, we have this service, we have yeah, all you, the things that Steam has, and we do this better. 
but and they don't. Here's no, <laughs> they, they don't. don't. They do much, much less. They have terrible security issues. There's no, there's no, there's no social features. No, none whatsoever. Like Steam has, and even if you don't use it, Steam has a fuckload of features. Steam uh-huh. is insane yeah. with their features. Uh, it's one of the reasons that even though you have the Humble Store, you have GOG, you have lots of other – you do have other places to buy games Absolutely, on yeah. PC. I mean I bought um, – I, you know what I did? I bought fucking Warcraft. They released Warcraft and Warcraft 2 on GOG. Yeah. I immediately bought that because the idea of being able to play those games at native resolution without having to fuck with DOSBox, I'm like, fuck yes, I'm on board with yeah. that. And they, they did that. They achieved that. And you know what? It even has Battle.net servers. That's pretty good. So, yeah, you can play up to eight play. players in multiplayer online. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's like yeah, their mean, competition, but they're not at that same level. And competition is good. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely. But Gearbox didn't come out to be competition by being a superior or a even product. They came out and you just epic? epic. Sorry, yeah. God, I do that all the time. Epic came out and just started shitting. Yeah, they're not. They're not shout offering. out a shit store and then just started throwing money at developers. Which I mean, hey, if that means the actual developers are going to get more money, that's also nice. Yeah, no, I'm on but board. But at the with same that. time, you, you still it, you're is someone uh, compared it to well, fu- people that argue against it, and it's usually console players who don't get why we don't want to go to another store on PC. Um, compared to, well, Xbox and uh, Nintendo and Sony have always gated their stuff off. Yes, but it wasn't that I couldn't go to fucking Walmart and buy this game. Right. But Kroger doesn't have it. Or, I mean, um, um, uh, Myers can't sell it. Yeah. It, or it, this game is only available at GameStop. Yeah. And you can't buy it anywhere else. Yeah, it, it, it's a very di- – it's like – um. It's exactly that. Like, yeah. oh, I have an Xbox. I want to buy this game. But the only place I can buy it from is Walmart. Oh, guess what? Walmart doesn't stock it because it's a GameStop exclusive. Like, that's yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah, like, yeah. you want to buy that game and you don't have a GameStop near you. You know, it's kind of a similar feature. And, like, like uh, and another thing I think is, is, like, a lot of people already have built their collections on Steam. Like, mm-hmm. I know I personally have more games on Steam than I have had on every console I've owned combined. Yeah. Over the years, right? So it's like it's it's annoying. I've already got GOG, I've got Battle.net, I've got Origin, I've got mm-hmm. Steam. Now I gotta buy Epic to play Epic games. Or not buy, but download. Yeah, download which... Epic Store to play it play games on the yeah. Epic Store. And then you sit there and you go, and this missing features that every single one of those things mm-hmm. I just mentioned has. It yeah. doesn't have social features, it doesn't have a cart. It, it just got a search function, really? Like and granted, something like Battle.net. There's is, no gifting. There's no. There's no gift. Well, there's no yeah. friends. Yeah, you have no friends. So it's like, what is what is the point? Like you know. Yeah, it's it's where I believe that once they stop being able to throw money to get these exclusives, um, after that, over time, that I think they won't. I, they, I there's no. I don't think there's a chance they keep up with um, Steam. I think everything will swing back. Steam will be, every everyone, still be the like the yeah the number one the most um, um, people used. want to sit there and they, uh, like I'm I'm all on board with giving developers a larger cut yeah. right I'm I'm completely on board with that developers you know, they deserve to make money mm-hmm. but like everyone's got to sit there and kind of understand well what is that thirty percent that Steam takes pays for it pays for consistent online high quality online servers for a multiplayer games mm-hmm. it pays for a consistently high quality you know advertising scheme and client that works it pays for all of those features that developers are allowed to use and utilize you know it's like like you got to remember steam does take 30 percent. that's a pretty decent amount but it's paying for a lot of things that they have to keep going for example borderlands 2 servers are still up that game is what almost seven years old now, but you can still play Borderlands multiplayer online because the servers are still on Steamworks. They're still there. They're still working. They're still functional. You know, you got Dota two. Dota two's old. It's still got servers. You got fucking Half Life and all the like well, Team, Fortress 2. Team Fortress two. Team Fortress two. Yeah, older, yeah. Like you got all these games. They got to pay for this. They got to pay for those servers. CS:GO and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, not only that though, but like other game servers. I guess Borderlands two still has its servers up. There's a lot of games. Like, uh, KOTOR uh, well not KOTOR uh, bot- the original Battlefront games they have their Steam 
they're hosting on Steamworks these days. Oh, they switched over to I Steamworks. I believe now? so. Because I know the because they, they the re-released old servers, them. The Lucas Arts are gone. Yeah, they re-released. The someone someone's gone. got a hold of them and they re-released the games on Steam. I believe they do use Steamworks. No, I might be able to they, play the game now because when I bought it, it you were not able to play the game unless you got on um, some. There were a couple private servers right but i i I, made me out the original battlefront but i think the original battlefront 2 was recently acquired by someone and re-released on steam and it has multiplayer up to 64 players so i don't know if that's necessarily steam works and i'm sure someone can correct me they they possibly might or they'll just or get completely ignored either way i don't care but it's like it's a matter of like steam offers all of this stuff it offers the hosting it offers the servers it offers the downloads you know, it pays for all that. And granted, so does Epic, but Epic ha- Epic's able to offer that 12% or take the, only that 12% and offer the 88 because you guys got to remember how much money they made off of Fortnite. They're mm-hmm. not they're not hurting for money right now. They're like uh they're like Nintendo but without the awesome parts of Nintendo. With the awesome parts of Nintendo being that they invest in their IPs and they can they they, they play the long con, the long con, the long game. Whereas Epic's just like, oh, well, we've got $60 billion from Fortnite. Let's use it and throw it at the developers. Yeah, which is exactly what they're doing. That's, and that's it's not competition. That's not competition, though. That's You're not you're not offering a superior product. You're not even offering – you're, you're barely offering you're a product. You're making it so you're the only ones offering the product at all. Yeah, and it's like that's, With, uh, that's not – the case of those games. That's not helpful. No, it's and the the only reason that it's it, it it will it it does succeed that they did but you can pretty much say they won in the case of like survivability um is that boycotts for gaming it doesn't never, matter now. Nobody nobody ever doesn't buy the game. I still remember the huge Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. Don't buy Modern Warfare 2 or Three and it, whichever one, and doesn't matter. All, everybody, everybody, it still sold that. It's EA still sold like crazy. Still sell like fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, apparently, um, Metro sold great on um on there, but it like, but I I'm not buying it. I'm not going into it. I'm not. I have no intention of using their service. Uh, I can wait. I'll yeah. wait and buy those yeah, games on sure. Steam. Also, when they get come out, they're gonna come out with the fucking um. All the DLCs and shit that come yep, out. Yep, yep. The game of the year editions, you know, all that, and, and that's what I'll get. I'll be fine with that. Yeah, and not even that for me like, would be like a huge maybe. Yeah, I mean that that just leaves a sour taste in my mouth, man. To sit there like exclusivity, like that, like it's like console exclusives, I I are annoying to a degree, but sometimes I understand it because most of the time console exclusives are made by the console maker. Or a, develop, or, yeah. or, a, or a developer or studio owned by or partnered with the console. Like Game Freak isn't fully owned by Nintendo, but they have that very close partnership. It's like Naughty Dog. I don't yeah. I don't think they're owned by Sony, but they they have, they have that the close partnership to work with Sony. They have that close it's partnership. It's just recently they, they that have like, for 20, yeah. 25 years or something like There's that. There's a few studios that just recently have come to where they don't only make games for those consoles. Yeah. Uh, and console t- exclusives, a big part of that is that company, Sony, Microsoft, whoever, they're not Microsoft anymore. They barely make a fucking thing. But yeah, they yeah. pay that extra cost. They pay for that extra, and you get more quality out of the games. Look at fucking God of War. Look at every like a, a lot of the well Nintendo too. Look at everything Sony and Nintendo has been putting out. Yeah, fucking banger after banger. God of War, Spider Man, Breath of um, the Wild, of uh, Super yeah. Mario Odyssey. It's like the, uh, the Last of Us. Like I like I said, Naughty, Naughty Dog. Dog. Everything yeah. Naughty Dog does. Yeah, like the, the, these games come out and they're just fucking awesome. Then. And yeah. Nintendo just knows how to make a fucking game. They know how to make a Nintendo game. They don't need the most powerful system. They're going to make a bright, cheerful, colorful game, and it's going to look fucking gorgeous and blow your goddamn mind, even though they don't have half the power of the others. Yeah. Um, even the uh, – I've, I've watched videos of the uh, new Yoshi game. Oh, uh, dude, Yoshi, I want that Yoshi game. Yoshi Cardboard What the Fuck game. Yoshi's Crafted World. fucking gorgeous. Uh, have you ever played Yoshi 64? Yeah, it's Yoshi sixty four. Wait, no, I didn't. Oh. But it looks. I I I, it's Yoshi I might have played a little bit of it. Yeah. It's Yoshi sixty four. It's which a side scroller. You an jump in. It eat, really eat was enemies. a fantastic game. Yeah, it's and that's all it is. It's simple. It's it's pretty, and that's all they need. Yeah, that's really all they need. And they got that brand recognition too. You know, when oh, of you, you got to remember that Nintendo owns the biggest media franchise on the planet. 
mm-hmm. Pokemon. Yep. It outclasses everyone. They've got some of the most recognizable characters in the world, right up there with Mickey Mouse. You got Mario. Everyone knows who fucking Mario is. Mario no one knows who Sam Fisher is. Mario and Pikachu. Yeah, Mario most recognizable Pikachu. characters. Yeah, probably of all time. Yeah, I don't think I can't like the closest up there would be like Master Chief, Mickey Mouse, uh, Mickey Mouse. Yeah, Mickey Mouse, and then you're talking. Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. Yeah. That's it. And yeah. now, because of Marvel, you might throw in Iron Man. Um, yeah, but, maybe. But every like, across the planet, they know those characters. Yeah. They know the Nintendo characters. Yeah. They're so absolutely They're, in the zeitgeist. Yeah. And it's like, they have that. And they and, have that power to put behind it. It's and, why they're, they, they make And that was another thing products. that was mentioned in the... Uh, in that thread that I, I talked about earlier where they were talking about Nintendo being at, that was one of the things like they have their rec- they have those recognizable characters and while a lot of their stuff is, is kind of copy paste in a way mm-hmm. it's it's like you said with the Ubisoft thing it, it gives you that consistent quality uh, where Nintendo does do things where they take risks but not maybe not as much they take calculator risks like they did with Breath of the Wild Breath well, of the Wild they turned into an say- open world game but, I would say they take huge risks, like they, especially they, with their gimmicky. Like, like okay, they come out with the I'm Wii, speaking, the Switch. I think I'm specifically speaking for the games themselves, yeah, especially Mario games. The yeah. Mario games, like all Mario games, are the same. They're they're they have just enough well, differentiating their, factors. Yeah, but like they're all the same basic premise. You're they're just 2D you games, run and jump, and then run the 3D jump. games. Yeah, you run and jump. You run and jump. You, you jump. You jump and shoot. You jump, jump and shoot. Yeah. Jump and shoot. But it's like that. It's that's simple. all it is. And you know what? That's all it needs to be. Now, Bre- Zelda, I think Zelda and Metroid are those are those um, <clears throat> those franchises where I think they can branch out a little more and experiment. Yeah. Uh, like Metroid Prime Four was such a huge departure. <clears throat> my voice is going away. Um, from Super Metroid and the other two Ds, like it was so amazing though. It was mind blowing. And Retro Studios did a beautiful job, and I'm so loving that they're on board for Metroid Prime Four. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> but you have that, you have Zelda, where they departed from that linear style of Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess and stuff, which I think it lost a little bit of that Zelda charm, that Zelda soul, but it kept enough of it in Breath of the Wild and turned in, they, they, they went. It's still, even with my, even with the other stuff, yeah, the experimental stuff, it still keeps that, that adventure. Yeah. That feeling and that, that of sense going of adventure. on this. Yeah. yeah. Which is what I think the, I mean, the original Zelda was, had that sense of adventure. Mm-hmm. This world that you get to explore and. And um, a lot of people want to complain about Breath of the Wild changing the formula. Breath of the Wild just went back to its roots mm-hmm. because the original Zelda was open world. Mm-hmm. You could literally do whatever you wanted at any time. You might have died, but if you were skilled enough, you could go beat a dungeon eight with a fucking wooden sword if you really, really wanted to try that. It's gonna you're gonna hit that thing a million times, but you could do it. I think that's my one issue with it <clears throat> is where they changed the formula. Um they didn't also include the specifically dungeons. Yeah. That's that's where yeah. I think they missed the mark a little bit. Yeah. Um, Other than that, like the game is absolutely amazing to play. The you're you're it's fucking gorgeous the adventure. It it hits all those marks. You think uh you think Zenimax and Bethesda are gonna come after us because we're titling this with their Skyrim trademark? I doubt it. We're just using the yeah. just the name. I mean we got the seat you know. We'll see what happens. I, I still love that we have CD Projekt Red oh. approval for using Geralt as our profile picture. That was funny. That's great. That's the best tweet I think I've ever gotten, man. Um, I was going to mention about them specifically. Um, supposedly the footage and things that they've shown for... Um, Cyberpunk? No, not Cyberpunk. Oh, oh. Bethesda. Oh, um, fuck Bethesda. They, yeah. <laughs> the um, um, Elder Scrolls Six and uh, Starfield. Is that the name of the... Yeah, yeah, name? something yeah. like that, yeah. Uh, people, the, the, they're supposedly so far what they've shown is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, cool. Whatever. As long as... If you it's the what? same engine, I'm going to be disappointed. Skyrim so was gorgeous. So now I don't know if it's the same engine. Hopefully it's not. I mean, you uh, It could, probably is. Who oh knows? We're talking just character models, so you could do anything with those. Yeah, no, I mean, you can see some of the things that modders have created yeah. um, with the limited limitations of Creation Engine. Yeah. Like, they've created amazingly beautiful models like one that comes to mind for me is the recorder follower 
her model is amazing. It's super high def, and mm. she's very pretty. And it doesn't look like it fits in the game. It whatsoever. does not fit. Does not at all. Or you look at like uh, the the overhauls they've done, where you mm. got like the Bijan house, uh, the Bijan women, and like like they're so much better looking than the like their hair is well defined. They have good faces. They're it not. Doesn't, it, it's they not quite potato like Oblivion. But it's still a little potato standard Skyrim. A little bit, yeah. Which is funny going – I'm playing it again and I'm really wishing with VR I could have those HD overhauls. I'm 90? I'm somewhat sure you can. I mean if it's available, it's not. I'm it's pre- not easily moddable. I'd have to go in and actually But I mod do it. know for a fact that Skyrim VR is moddable. Oh, okay. Yeah. I do know that for a fact. I haven't I, – I need to go start looking that up because I do – I'd like to have some of those mods in the game. Like – some of the weapon overhauls are so necessary. Exactly. Like, the weapon overhauls, the enemy overhauls. Like uh like Lean Wolf's uh Lean Weapons. I think that's his name, Lean Wolf. I don't uh, some something wolf yeah. has lean weapons where like the crafting overhauls. Where like uh you know, like you have like the stall room sword or glass sword where they're like seven inches wide and they look mm-hmm. like big stupid toy foam swords. Yeah. Where it lean it's it leans them up and makes them look like actual swords mm-hmm. and not like something you would take to like a like you would buy find a, a fucking Toys R Us. Yeah, or like Target. Yeah. Uh, Toys R Us R I P. Yeah. Rip. <laughs> they're dead. Press F they pay your died. respects. Um I, I don't can know. Can I can I get an F in the chat? Come on guys. <laughs> Come on, guys. Give us F in the chat. Give us F in the comments uh, yes. on the YouTube video because um, we don't have comments enabled on our F website. Jeffrey. <laughs> I miss Jeffrey, man. I don't. It was shitty-ass commercials. Oh, I know. They're the worst. You know what I do miss? Around here, we had a, a lo- – I don't know if it was nationwide or not, but we had a little local area, a local toy store called Johnny's Toys. And yeah. every year on your birthday, if you were with them, they would send you in the mail a little iron key. And you would go to the store and you would unlock, like, uh, they had, like, this wall of just uh, safety safety deposit box type thing. You'd open it up and whatever was in there, you get to keep. That's awesome. Yeah. And you just That's got to choose. No yeah. wonder it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, no. Um, um, there is a local. Capitalism kills those things. There's a local. Um, there is a local. Uh, I don't know what it is. But it's like a local business type thing mm-hmm. who in their building still has some of the Johnny toys, uh, uh, props and stuff. It's like, Oh, that's nice. awesome. A little bit of my childhood, you know, yeah. which I don't have very many fond memories of, but anyway, well, there's um, nice things. there's yeah. a, I, I think we can wind it down. Yeah. Right that's now. what I was getting at. Cause let's wind it uh, on a positive yeah. note, not depressing. Like a, my childhood, a positive, <laughs> giggity, uh, a positive note. Um, the uh, I think this this happened after we recorded, uh, but before the last episode came out. Yeah. Um, so basically, between Saturday so, and Tuesday. So the or Thursday. The whole battle between um, PewDiePie and T Series to be the most subscribed uh, channel on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So it looked like it was finally done. It PewDiePie got passed by T Series. Oh wait, 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 wait! We they can't passed... talk about PewDiePie. He's a white nationalist. Oh remember? yeah, he's he's a white nationalist because he uh, made a joke one time and because he he made a Hitler joke and said the yeah. N word on stream. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. And, and, and apologies don't matter. It's just you you, you can't. see. Okay, no one can have forgiveness for anything. Before we move on, yeah, this is why I decided two years ago when we started this. That I was not going to apologize for any dumb shit thing I say. Yeah. I'm just going to own it and move on. There isn't going to be, oh, I'm sorry. I said that I was a different person. I was like, yeah, I it's said It's like it. Kevin Hart said when all that shit, when he was, they wanted him to host the Oscars. He's like, I've already apologized for it. I've already talked about it. I'm done. I'm not going to host. I'm Except, not going to do this for you guys. I'm not going to apologize for it. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, he'd already, it yeah. was the whole, uh, that's what? gay, knock his son, no more jokes. Fucking hilarious. I don't give a fuck who you are. That joke, that bit was hilarious. Can we stop being so sensitive? Okay. Yeah, 100%. You should accept your gay children. That bit was fucking funny. Anyway. Let's get back to the funny. So, let's get back to the positive note. Yeah. So it looked like it's done. It, 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 it was done, basically. Yeah. They passed. I think they went like 10K past PewDiePie on subscribers. Um, people were pretty much saying, well, it, the, the only thing left for, for cons, uh, consolidation was, well, at least they're a corporation, so it doesn't really count. PewDiePie is still the most subscribed single, um, creator on YouTube. Right. And then PewDiePie, uh, another YouTuber, um, Rumi and Boy in a Band. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I they heard They released about this. a, they released a song, uh, that, 
called Congratulations to congratulate T Series. Yeah. At the same time, it's a total fucking diss track. Uh huh. And the song is right. absolutely fucking great. And uh, um, I believe that that faulted Felix into having more subscribers. He's like 300,000 subscribers ahead of T-Series now. Like the whole big thing was to see who got to 100,000 first yeah. because he beat them to, uh, to eight, from like 60, 70, 80, 90,000. He beat them and then they'd finally passed him. He was sta- stagnated completely. This came out and fucking absolutely drove him through the roof of subscribers to where, you know, like I said, 300,000, maybe even now 400,000 subscribers ahead of T-Series. The song itself brings up all the dirty laundry that T-Series, the company has yeah, yeah, from I did their beginning, mm-hmm. yeah, where they started off as a fucking pirated music company and yep. video movie company yep. um, to the fact that the CEO has... Um, uh, like a Me Too thing going on where he's like been accused of sexual harassment. And I believe there might be corruption charges against him. Yes. Yeah. There's also, uh, and I love the way PewDiePie puts it in the song. He's like, uh, how are you dealing with that collusion with the mafia? And he says something like, uh, that's a joke. Uh, for legal reasons, that's a joke. <laughs> Seriously, it's a joke. Please don't kill me, Indian mafia. <laughs> like something like that. <laughs> This song, oh man this song is fucking bad and that's the thing is the song is also really really good like way better than it has any right to be like as song, a listenable song oh like um what, what, that song from tech nine called sriracha the title yes. of that song suggests that that song should not be good it's just about hot sauce it's just about hot sauce he puts it on everything yeah. And that song is way better than it has any right to be. It's like that song Not that right I'm now. Tech Nine, I love them. But Tech Nine's awesome. Um, it's like that song or right Weefy. now. That's... <laughs> he has a song called Weefy. Yes, and it's about Wi-Fi at a Chinese restaurant. It's like why? So funny. Um, there's a song right now that everyone's going nuts over. Um, one, what is it? one fucking horse? I don't know. It's a Yee Yee song, and it's it's a con- it's a rap country. I yeah. guess is the best way to put it. God. And something, and I didn't read Why this whole story. Thing? It's a that's the thing. The song <laughs> fucking bangs. The song is great. Um, oh, I hate the it. The funny thing is, when I encountered that song, I only encountered it from some vines where it was a trend to they'd have, have a picture of a, a cup, and then somebody would drink it, and then pull the label off, and it would say yee juice and that song starts playing the horses in the back and then the person's dressed as like a fucking cowboy dancing like to this fucking song i didn't realize it was a real song and that it's like number two on the top songs list right now apparently billboard All right. billboard it like people are pissed because they pulled it off of the country top songs <laughs> so that they put it just on the pop rap hip-hop right list. right yeah um and now Jim, Jimmy Buffett, somebody, some country singer is going to do a remix of it to put it back on the country top. <laughs> Which apparently they've already Which done the remix so and the remix is just as good. Yeah, I got I, I to gotta check it out. I've listened right. to the main song. It's good. But I just wanted to bring up congratulations. Fucking funny. Subscribe oh, to PewDiePie. That re- no, do not. No. Do subscribe but, to PewDiePie. Um, Fuck you. That reminds me. Did you see that? Uh, and it happened. I, actually, I think before we recorded the last episode, there was a guy on YouTube who live streamed his viewer count versus PewDiePie's viewer count and got like 300,000 subscribers just from doing that. I'm not surprised. It's like. There's uh <laughs> Maybe we should do that. Maybe. There's a, there's we another YouTuber. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost there, guys. We're almost going to suppress PewDiePie. Now, there's another YouTuber. His Every video he's been doing has been, that's his shtick. Is he's like, we're, we're going to pass PewDiePie. Like, he keeps on pushing that. Fucking, you know what? More. more power to you, man. Oh, of course. It's funny. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and wind it down there. We talked yep. about a lot of dumb shit. Um, the patrons are going to get to watch me walk around this fucking, all, this, this fucking room like 30 goddamn times trying to figure that out and be frustrated and be that stupid. Was, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> and no, you don't fuck all of you. But um, no, not really. I love all of you guys. But uh, yeah, that's it for us, man. We're done talking about dumb shit. You know, yeah. Skyrim VR, play basketball. You know, Dennis Rodman edition. See, that's what I want is Skyrim VR basketball. Like, yeah. There's a few fair games where throwing shit, it, it works and it's fun. You could use the telekinesis spell. Oh man, play it. Oh, I can't. I need to get that spell now. Yeah, that sounds like it would be awesome. Yep, you can you can throw like apples to people with it. <laughs> I finally, after playing like four hours, I figured out that I can pick up and hold things by using the whole 
button instead of just immediately picking up an item. You didn't know that? I knew it on the console version. Same I did not know it with thing, this. Same fucking thing, man. Yeah, because I it stuff's weird, but yeah, I figured All that right. out and I was having fun putting Let, baskets on people's heads. Let's not go on off on a tangent again. I won't. Fuck it. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, if you guys like what we do, you want to help us out, support the channel, for support the the whole shebang bang we're doing here. You can always uh, like, share, subscribe, give us a comment. You know, Patreon. Patreon. Yeah, we got that. We, Patreon we have one of those things. things. We get like eight that, bucks that a month. People from do. <laughs> But it's something. It's it's better than nothing, and you guys want to go to it. If you like what we do, you can give us a it. buck. You can pay for it. Yeah, just give us a dollar. Like yeah. seriously, just throw a dollar a month our way. That that helps out a lot and uh, helps us keep doing this. Helps us keep motivated. Yeah. So uh, for the ungodly geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. Mm, fuck yeah. Always right in the ass with a cactus.